We're getting ever so close to that playoffs happening for Street Fighter League Pro JP. But one thing is for certain, the action does not stop here. My name is Vicious here with St. Cola. And welcome again to the official English broadcast of Street Fighter League Pro JP. It's been a wonderful season thus far. It's been absolutely close. And we're still getting closer and closer to seeing who will qualify for the playoffs happening in January to get themselves ready for Capcom Cup happening in February. Before we get started, I got to ask my man St. Cola, what's going on, man? What can we expect for today's matches? We can expect some runbacks as per usual. We're getting closer to that fun finality. We're, we're getting closer to the end as we see on the schedule. This will sh we'll see it. We'll show you how we're going to wrap things up in the next couple of days. We only have a few more to play, and it's getting down to the wire. Now we have a little bit more in terms of the gap situation, but we also have a, a head on the deck in terms of Good 8 Squad being in the lead. Even though they faltered yesterday, they're still giving that solidity. We're also looking at the new DLC character that came out. Luke is ridiculous. One of my favorite characters. He's got a little technicality tool with the charge motions and stuff, or charge inputs and stuff like that. You gotta hold down things and uh, he can get the damage on the deck too with this character. Uh, the zoning is also ridiculous, so if you haven't, check out that character. He's out available right now and he'll be able to be used on episode 14 on the 7th of December onward. So if anyone is so in Inclined to pull up this character, uh, we might be able to see it. I'd love to see it too. How about you, Vicious? You know, I'm actually really excited to see what transpires between now and the 7th of December because there's been a lot of tech going forward on the Twitterverse and all sorts, all walks of life, every single region putting out as much tech as possible. Not even just the damage, but also some of the trades that he's got going on as well. And they need it for all the wins they could possibly get if they happen to use them. But for the most part, a lot of these teams right now are gunning for those top five spots for the playoffs. As you can see on the left, between second and fifth place, those rankings will determine who will get the home and away side for the initial playoffs, which lead into the grand finale, the grand scheme of things, the grand finals happening January 2022 in the late side of things too, where they face off against the number one seeded team and those teams are competing for a hefty amount of yen, 8 million yen to be exact. And the split is 5 million for first place, 2 million for second, uh, 1 million for third as well. That conversion rate still as important as ever, right? It's still a hefty amount of change if you split it four ways. Mm -hmm. But fact of the matter is, that's still a good amount of change. And of course, these players are competing to become best in the world to face off against those who have won in the other side of the top, other side of town in Street Fighter League for the World Finals happening in February, as we mentioned earlier. But we were talking about what's transpiring today. Before we get into the actual matches, let's talk a little bit about what happened between the previous teams in just a little bit, right? We've talked about the playoff contention and how important it is right now for some of these teams to solidify their place into that number five spot and how much it's how much uh, these wins are important for the teams that are in the bottom three. Uh, those bottom three teams right now have shifted just a little bit, not significantly, but at least between fifth and sixth place, I believe, that's where the shifts have been happening. But what we can expect, again, from the previous matches, on the recap, Good 8 Squad face off against Mildon Beast in that faded run back. As you can see, Mildon Beast actually walked away the winner. Good 8 Squad needed at least three points to solidify their spot in the Grand Finals as the number one contenders. But as it stands, they are just a little short. You can see how. YC Mochi was the only one that fell during the matches. However, Daigo and Fudo pulling their weight and taking down the W. We also had a team match between Saishun, Kansuo, Komamoto, and Gyogun, which St. Cola could tell you about next. Yes, sir. We have a draw game right here. So not able to clutch it out, but still, we saw Nishikin coming through clutch against Mago, which is definitely a morale booster. I feel like that was a difficult matchup for him just in general on paper and against Mago himself. Uh, you know, the Gil pick wasn't it for Nemo, but Nishikin coming through and that just shows you the kind of treasure they, they got in Street Fighter League to have that secret weapon, and it worked out. We see the standings right here. Good A squad still at the top spot. Uh, Shinobiism Gaming, second. FAP Roto Z, third. Yogun, Oja Body Star, and still at the bottom. Milodon B, Saishin, Sun Cole, and Soul, sorry, and Detonation still at the end, but the points are so, like, finite. 
They're so, they're just right there. You see Ojo Body Star and Milodon Beast right at that line. Only a few points away. And today could be the day for Ojo Body Star to kind of get in the lead of the pack and solidify their spot even further. But again, everyone wants to be in that middle spot. You see, in between those red lines to stay fine. They want to be in the qualification seat. And the higher you go, the better your seat is going to be to be in those home positions so that you can, uh, you know, be able to strategize a little bit better and not have to give away your cards earlier. Milodon Beast, even though they were able to clutch it out yesterday, needs a few more points to score. Soul at the very bottom of that nation at the very very bottom that lead down there starting to get a little more drastic yeah i'm looking at how many days are remaining right we have five including today including right now and it looks like i feel like for couple for detonation it would be a really immense hill to climb right the max potential points that they could possibly get including today would be what four eight 12, 12 points total. I don't know if that's going to be enough mm -hmm. considering the results of everybody else going on in the league, right? And just in case you guys missed it and wondering, how did we even get to this very point? How did these certain teams collect all of these points in a certain manner? And why is it my team up at the very top? Well, you can blame Good Ape Squad for that very reason. But also, you could also figure out how that all transpired by checking out the VODs. Um, over in the multiple social media sites, all social media sites that are streaming uh, Street Fighter League Pro JP, or you have it on Mildom, you have it on YouTube, you have it on Twitch as well. Um, but for the mm -hmm. most part, this is what we're looking at, right? Kumofa Detonation at the very bottom, alongside Sai Shukan Soul Kumamoto and Mildom Beast. What it looks like right now for Nagoya Ojo Body Spar specifically, since they didn't play yet this week. They are easily at the advantage over Mildon Beast and have a significant chance in front of them to secure that place in fifth place, I should say. Before we get into that match, let's talk about this one. The V6 Plus FAV Roto Z team led by Sakonoko, the strongest halberd. I'm telling you, man, age is not a number because his eyes are still working. And speaking of eyes, it's the eyes of desperation being looked upon you. And that means Ryusei is in town. And of course, accompanied by the genius pro gamer that is Tokido with another Yurian on deck as well as Balrog. But you can't forget about the man who puts them all together, Papa Bonchan, who knows all about the team chemistry. He knows how to put people to bed as well. That is Bonchan with the Sagat play with Karen as well. This is one of the strongest teams and for a very good reason, statistically. However, they are still in the mix between second and fifth place. Mm -hmm. This ain't looking free and Dead Nation's coming up hungry for those points. They hungry for those points. Let's see who's on the deck. First off is the sturdy breadwinner himself, Itabashi Zangief. We've seen the Abigail and the Geef come from him to get those wins. Right behind is the Evo champion himself, incoming Sakura, now men coming through with the Sakura and the Ken, which is super sick to see. And we see the Prince of Light, John Takuchi. Don't let that Rashid flee. Get that out of here. He's all about that Cody play. My own duties. And then in the end, it's the returning monk himself, Tachikawa, who is struggling to find a lot more Ws. This team itself is struggling right here, even though you've got an Evo winner, even though you've got champions on that side. Uh, multi-game specials on that side it's still difficult for them to come through but they are definitely going to put up a fight today and today is definitely the day as we said as you actually have pointed out they are lower in the end and i'm not even sure if they can make it to that red line if they can get past the the just that that one spot at least to get in that fifth place spot if they sit so perfect and they have a tall order ahead of them fav roto z loaded with tokido sako bonch and ryusei just champions on their end too that just shows you the the height the level, the amount of, of pressure that is in Street Fighter League, the amount of play, the amount of talent that is out here. The way team is going to be structuring their team up first and the home team will be coming up. They need every advantage that they can get, that nation themselves, uh, because last time they uh, were able to at least get the draw, but this time they need to, they need to take it all. Right, and you can see how the structure broke down, right? You had Naomin and Itabashi Zangief going up the first two spots as the away team, and then John Takauchi didn't get to take down that man sitting in the anchor spot, Tokido. It's a different ball game this time around as the V6 Plus Roto Z team, FAV Roto Z team, has been, uh, have decided to put Bonchan on the bench, as a matter of fact. Mm. And you can see a little bit of concern, maybe, from Itabashi. He's not his uh, usual self, I feel like. He hasn't given us a big old smile, but it is home discussion time. Let's talk about it now. So, it is going to be Ryusei, Sakunoko, and Tokido, if I'm not mistaken, right? For the away team. 
Mm -hmm. For the most part, that's going to be the set structure. That's going to be the set lineup for the away team. Um, I will say, I'm kind of tempted, if I were Itabashi, I'm kind of tempted to put the run back scenario again in terms of like Sakunoko and Tokido. But going up first, I think Tachikawa might go up. I'm kind of confused as to whether or not they're going to utilize him to the fullest for this specific matchup. But again, who would be on the bench at that point? Itazan was actually saying it's going to be either Sako or Banchan on the bench. That's why they, that's what they had thought beforehand. And it makes sense. I think so. Okay. And now it's just a matter of who the captain wants to put up first. Will it be Nauman uh, for you say? Will it be John Takauchi running against the Urian? I'm kind of curious. Mm. Um, who do you think it's going to be? I think, it, I think it's going to be now. It looks like it actually is now. I'm up first. Like, good call on that. Oh. Idazan asking one to play with Ryusei and Tachikawa. Immediately raised his hand. Idazan just smirked and said, now when you go up. He's like, no, 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 put your hand down. You know how you put your hand up in the class? He just says, no, 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 next. <laughs> they just go right over you. That's what happened there. Idazan not having too much faith in Tachikawa, putting him on the bench to warm it up. Now I'm says he'll carry on Tachikawa's spirit and win this. <laughs> <laughs> but you see right here, he's got quite a few more points than Tachikawa. You know, he's got four out of eight right here, staying solid out here in terms of the points position. That's not a too bad of a record in Street Fighter League. You know, we've seen the, the soccer and the Ken pick come through. If he can stabilize himself, stabilize himself, I should say, in the neutral, I feel like, uh, you know, he can be a, a a big threat, right? And he's an evil champion for a reason. Going up against Ryusei is going to be difficult, but I'm sure he's had a lot of practice against Urians, whether it be the Sakura pick or the Ken pick, either or. I do feel like maybe Sakura might be a little bit better on the other hand where you say also a champion himself too with the four points maybe lost one more game because he's been in one more game than uh than nauman but we'll have to see how it shakes out here I, on paper i feel like both the ken and the sakura are going to be suffering against uh yuri just a little bit more the fireball game not you know uh, as beneficial, uh, Yurian has a lot of ways to get around that. He's got the V skill, he's got the EXDs and things like that to catch that reach. Uh, the pressure sequences from Yurian are going to be really strong. However, the standing light kick from Sakura can put in a lot of work, so you can't be whipping, crouching knee punch, standing heavy punch, things like that from Yurian. is going to have to play it a careful sort of way. Yeah, I think that's a very valid observation there against Ryusei, right? Having the normal placement with the mediums are ever so important also to kind of outplay your opponent. The problem is Nauman is used to that very strategy, right? He understands and utilizes his own normals very well. More specifically, that light kick that you were talking about. Both Ken and Sakura can have those kind of buffer normal games to take advantage of their opposition. Uh, majority of the time to start getting their Oki. And we know how dangerous both characters can be once their Oki gets started mid-screen, in the corner, especially in the corner if you can. But as it stands right now, Nauman has uh, had a pretty solid record overall. If I'm taking a look closer to it, uh, not too long ago on the 24th of this month, he used Sakura against Shuto Zuri and then took it down 2-0, two games straight. Um, any other time he's faced off against a Yurian, if I were to be very specific about it, mm, not too many times. I'm looking at the entire list. There hasn't been too many instances uh, other than Shuto. Mm. Well, that's a little bit of practice right there against at least Shudo, but let's see how he does against Ryusei, who's a lot more aggressive. Uh, going to the home trivia that we were talking about this entire week, where it's based around the bad habits of other team members that they notice. Nauman says he likes to touch his hair fringe, like, all the time. Itazan says Tachikawa always likes to brag a lot, especially starting the sentence was, if it were, if it was me, I would have... Oh, he's one of them backseat gamers right there? Well, actually, if it was me, I would have... I would have... <laughs> I love it. Not me, man. That's maybe maybe that's the reason why they put him on the bench. They're like, okay, well, we need these uh, the, the third person perspective, Tachikawa. Why don't you give us the breakdown of uh, what you should have done? But no, all jokes aside, I mean, Tachikawa, uh, he hasn't really had too much time to shine yet, in my opinion. Um, actually, it's actual factuals when you take a look at it. To me, let me take a look at his current record, right? Tachikawa has only played about four games thus far with uh, a handful of characters. Chun-Li, Rashid, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Those are the main two characters he's used, right? We haven't mm -hmm. seen any of his poison, I believe. I may be mistaken, but from what it says here on the record sheet, I think that 
He's only used Rashid and Chun-Li thus far. But as it stands right now, he hasn't really found success in any of his characters just yet. I think he's the only player right now in the league without a W. Oof. I, I think Itazan at least, you know, is feeling maybe uh, justified in, in seeding Tachikawa, at least for right now, right? They need all the points that they can get, and the record not showing too well. Let's see what Nauman does. This is going to be a difficult matchup. I still feel like Ryusei definitely is a lot more aggressive than Chudo is. He's going to be going in and getting those wins. Crouching to punch into the fireball to round start with it, already getting some damage on the deck. And you see him trying to walk him down with the crouch. I mean, get careful, though. That's with Punishable. A lot more this season. I think Ryusei's spatial awareness is way more on point than Shuto. I think Shuto is great at counter poking, but when it comes to initializing or excuse me, initiating the offense, I think Ryusei does a better job of that and understanding the opponent's tendencies. But now I'm slowly creeping up. He's abandoned the counter poke strategy by going for the throw initially, then back into the counter poke strategy again, doing a great job once he gets uh, Ryusei in the corner, knowing full well that he does not have enough space to escape. But here we go, going back into the mirror. I like that. Side switch with it, sweep off the feet. EXDP right through, using the invuln to get right through the mirror. So smart with it now, has the activation. Now it's time to shine. You can apply that pressure with the fireballs. Beach were flavored. Oh no, whips the entire EX Cherry Tackle gets a knockdown. Back to Batista Bomb. But the challenge on the walk up, you can't walk in on me. Round two. Excellent challenge. And what a choice to use that there from Nauman. That could have been a big meaty coming in from Ryusei. And speaking of big moves already. EX tackle to start things off at the gate. EX fireball now throwing in that down forward roundhouse from Nauman as well. And a good interruption there from Yusei opting to go for the tackle ender. Another tackle ender just applying the onslaught, making a bunch of deals, mogul moves. I like this bust out from Nauman now. And we switch the platforms out here. Side switch with it with the beast skill like that. The crouch fierce beast skill and tire. So smart with it. He gets the V bar built up. Now it's time to activate. Don't wait. EX fireball. Put some palms on him. You're definitely dead after the EX Tatsu. Now mid with the first done. win. Ooh, he was he was saving he was saving room for later. That's the thing. That's how you know Nauman is a strategist. He's like, you know what? I'm gonna save some room for later. He's been at the buffet line more than once. He knows how to manage multiple plates and he knows what to what to do when it comes to bringing down the seconds. Uh, enough to force for you say back into the lobby. I like this. This is uh Ooh. we don't get to see this from you say too many times over. If you look back, you say is pretty eager to go back into the second match. But looking at it right now, I, I think Nauman just fully dominating him has been uh kind of an eye opener for the eyes of desperation. <laughs> yeah, my man's uh they're not too uh too open right now. Look at a little close, a little uh little upset at what happened and as you said before really challenging controlling this character uh you know put the silver back in the cage we saw a lot of the light buffers come through and the anti-situation side switch also was perfect too uh just being able to challenge and, and stay solid against a character that could crush you or peek with the crush counters put you in the corner put the put the mix with the b triggers and things like that shows that nauman is not afraid and puts his own pressure on and he falters in the corner we see ryusei faltering in the corner and Easier said than done to get out of that kind of situation, right? You got a slow reversal, easy to bait out. You can run a crouching light and wait for the frame kill to come through. Bait it out, get a full punch on the EX headbutt so you can't just sling that sucker out. I wonder what Ryusei is going to do to change up his approach. He had a good rhythm in the first part of the rounds, but it's just one mistake and he went down. Yeah, I think when it comes to offense, I think Ryusei's is a tad stronger, but Nauman's defense was a little bit better in that specific, in those specific mm. rounds but um it's hard to it's hard it's hard to actually say that and believe it because nauman had a superb start in the first round it was just the second round where he had that single that singular bus out from ex uppercut and managed to get the full swing against what you say but we'll see how it transpires now in the second game so we'll have a kick you love to have a crush just like this to get the v skill push you build up crush or you build a v bar from the crush and the v skill push to the corner and look at this, non-committal with it, not pressing the issue too much. Knows he doesn't have to overextend to get that win. Walk up throwing the minus situation. Nice and easy, controlling the chaos, controlling this silverback. Jane Goodall. Now switching to the fireball strategy. You know, Nauman hasn't really been trying to control the neutral with the fireball, but I do like this option. Look at how much meter he's built thus far. So against Ryusei, 
and not even trying, not even trying to let Ryusei find his activation route into, into the mirror. The anti-air is there, crouching heavy punch against the double knee drop, right on the money. Nauman really picking and choosing his spots to force Ryusei into an awkward activation. Oh, it's gonna be awkward position right here, up in the corner against the mirror. What's your defense, Nauman? Just hold that, yeah, take the throw. Don't wanna take too much more. EX activation, had the bar to do it. But I open up with the crouching in the kick. Man walked back and found the anti-air. Nice and easy with it. You say jumping into his death. One more touch situation. Off the backboard. Can he seal it? Off this reset. EX plus frames. One touch. No whip punish though from Nelman. Oh, he says he stays solid. Oh, and he just walks away from the danger. You are a stranger. That is some young man disciplinary actions right there. He learned from the greats. He learned from his elders. Do not shake hands with strangers. My man walked away mm. from danger the first side of it. But as always, when it comes to Ryusei and the Irian, the danger always seems to come back. Look at the stun already racking up one touch away, but still the bust out from the hero Nauman getting the full swing of momentum now. Oh, that stun has risen. The X head butt, coconut brain. I like the side switch. Try to get the throw, didn't go. Oh, gonna get the conversion? No, but we'll get the reset off. The throw again gets the win. Will you say solidify a spot? And I kind of like him getting a lot more aggressive. Obviously, there was a bust out situation that could have went the other way, but getting a lot more aggressive with his buttons. Maybe the side of victory just has to hold back just a little bit, step, stutter step, some of these normals to let, you know, the bust outs happen now and punish. Yeah, that's one thing he should be looking out for now, right? At least from uh, any sort of reset, any sort of knockdown. But as it stands right now, I think, you know, having that, that those V trigger moments is, is pretty crucial for both characters, mm. more so for Yuri. And I think that last round, Nauman actually caught himself going forward a little bit too much. And you can see he's doing it again. He's jumping into the anti-airs now. Here comes Ryusei. It's a perfect time for him to let his offense rip. And speaking of offense, a big interruption button from the light kick with the side switch now all from trigger. Nauman has so much juice, he doesn't even know what to do with it. Does have to back off though as the mirror comes out, the block strings full effect, but still the interruption from Nauman. He's trying to stick with it and get away from the mirror. Big trade-off, but that mirror is right on top of him and the escape is there, but not in Ooh. time. The full counter and conversion from my man Ryusei off with the crouching medium punch. He's happy about that one. He's like, you are not gonna escape me for too long. That's the great thing about Yuri. He always got the chase down situations on the deck with the ear chariots tackle. Always got a fast way to play. Always living life in the fast lane. I love the fact that Ryusei is turning up like volume out here, getting quick with it. And I feel like that's where Yuri really plays well. But you also saw him hold back just a little bit to let go of the tempo, mess up the rhythm of Nauman, and Nauman jumping into danger. The crouch fierce coming through as an anti-air is perfect in terms of damage gain uh, and push on the side of Yuri and Ryusei. He's what he was waiting for. You saw him back up, and that was actually the same situation that Nauman had put Ryusei in. And now we see the switch of positions. Can Nauman not fall to that rhythm, that tempo that Ryusei wants to play at? It's so weird seeing Nauman a little bit more antsy uh, round after round. I feel like he got a little bit more offensive as the rounds progressed. In comparison to how he got that time over win, was he not like satisfied with the pace that he was playing at? I feel like he just got into his own head afterwards. He's like, all right, well, I don't want to play this style anymore. I'm going to go ahead and start, you know, being a little bit more aggressive with my movement. Uh, that's when Ryusei started to shine. He's like, all right, well, I'm, I'm significantly better when it comes to paying attention to both the ground game and the air game. My defense is absolutely superb. And you see it. I, we kind of mentioned that earlier. We were saying that Ryusei's defense is just a little stronger, actually. No, I was saying his offense was stronger than his defense. My mistake. It's yeah, a whole yeah. different story now, though. Ryusei's defense have been a, has been a lot more active, which is what Nauman probably didn't anticipate. Like, he's like, all right, well, Ryusei is an offensive beast. We've seen that before. But his defense is a little lackluster. So I'm going to test the range, which is going to be great. Now we're going to see... All the strategies combined going into this final game of the set. At the end right here, game point for both players. Both have kind of found a game point. It's just solidifying it, right? I think Nauman needs to, uh, you know, be able to find a little bit more of the trigger activations and things like that, or just solidify these corner carry situations and put the pressure on Ryusei and hold back a bit. Same on the side of Ryusei in some situations, right? We've seen Ryusei back up a bit, get the anti airs going, as we said before. Just have to be able to stay solid and not let that corner carry get to him if you're Ryusei. 
Yeah, don't get hit with that heavy kick crush down. Get you the B-Skill corner kick. Bro, I just told you, don't be getting hit with the crush. Corner sin, B-Skill situation. And now I'm willing to spend that V-Bar. He's gonna get another V-Bar in this round. Gonna be able to activate real soon here anyway. Kind of difficult in this matchup. I feel like that's like asking someone not to breathe. It's like, don't get hit by this crush counter. You know, it's gonna happen, yeah, I feel like. <laughs> well, hold your breath. The sun is racking up, and look at the amount of life Ryuse has over Nauman just going back in. Just within range of the low medium kick, Ryuse does a fantastic job of checking the movement of his opponents once he finds that rhythm. And despite the warnings that we gave him, still runs into another crush counter from Nauman. Position. Neil, good for Sakura. Found the buffer the crouch kick EX. Perfect, gets the stun. One more situation will get it done. He said jump. But here's the activation. Back throw, here we go. I mean, he can still take this. It's gonna be difficult. Be reversal immediately. I like that from now. We get outside the situation. Holds a throw. You don't want to take the opening of a crush counter. Immediate challenge on the dash. You may not pass. And we're at final game, final round. Now then where you say this is just swinging back and forth like a seesaw. Yeah, but it obviously takes, you know, a little bit more than just the trigger than what we've seen coming in from Ryusei, because without it, it's just such an uphill, uphill battle. Spending a lot of the bar early from raw, pretty much raw EXs, just trying to catch Nauman off guard. I don't know if that's going to be the detriment to this current round, but Nauman is in full control. Yes, sir, the counter poking there from the stand light kick. Full conversion afterwards. Is he gonna spend it? Yeah, EX uppercut as well. Back to back to back EXs. And this is gonna be death. Ryusei committing to the EX headbutt. Now I'm at 100% calling it out. So absolutely at the ready. And that's so dangerous too. That's the kind of way I wanted to see the meter being used. I think uh, Ryusei gunning for a stray hit off the bat was a little bit too obvious and something Nauman kind of expected because none of it hit the mark. In fact, Nauman saving it at the very end is exactly what he needed to take down Ryusei. That burst of damage forcing that kind of extra mental pressure against Ryusei to guess was exactly uh, how we saw him falter, right? Forcing him in that mental state is like, all right, well, I have to bust out with EX headbutt because he's been an offensive uh, monster the whole time. He's been very adamant about pursuing some of these buttons on Meaty, on Wake Up. So mm -hmm. I have to try it out. But as it stands, now I'm in, it doesn't really matter, actually, when it comes to, like, pressuring with light normals because of the fact that EX Headbutt comes out so late, right? Yeah. So either way, I think Dalvin was in a very fair position to take it down from that from that uh, earlier position. Four out of five in anti-airs, two out of two when it comes to the EX bust outs, three out of three for anti-airs, and 50% for the bust outs. You can see how the stats played out from that round, and you can see from there, Nauman finding his success against Ryusei. Another W for, uh, for Nauman, by the way, in the run back. Fantastic strong start. You carrying Tachikawa's spirit on his back to get the W, doing it for the team. And remember, they need all the points possible to to try to at least get towards that fifth place spot to stay fine. They are struggling, but you see the hunger in their eyes and in their play too as well. To be able to bait that out and stay solid against such a aggressive character and aggressive player is no small feat, but now I'm coming through with the victory, but that's only one on the board, one match on the board, home, home team discussion. Talking again, looking a little bit cheerful right here. Uh, we see Moke stretching a little bit. Tachikawa, you know, maybe feeling like he had something to do with that win. I'm sure he was maybe backseat and giving a few tips here and there to his team members. Uh, but it's good to see that they they still got the fight. I feel like if you're down so many points, you know, some competitors might be like, ah, I mean, it's over. I'm just here to ruin people's day. But they're here to win. Everyone's feeling. Uh, is feeling happy about Nauman's week. You can see on their face, you can see on Itabashi Ida Zagif's, you know, he's smiling, Moke's smiling, Tachikawa didn't do much, but he's smiling out there too. Uh, so they're feeling good about this win. Hopefully they take the momentum with them. Team FAV Roto Z looking a little, uh, maybe not as cheerful, but they still have more games to play. They still have the first two and the anchor match to finish things off. Itazan saying next will beat Sako and ask John Takauchi if he's ready. John T, John T saying, are you sure it's me? He said, all right, I'm pulling out the Rashid. Vicious, he's going back to basics. As he should. I think this is an excellent choice as the middleman going up against Sakunoko. It's either that or Cody against Minot. Mm -hmm. 
I think having the Urien is way, way better. Or sorry, the Rashid is way better. I was already thinking about the anchor spot. Um, <laughs> going in with the Rashid is something that's pretty imperative in this match. I think it'll be yeah. just fine for good old JTAC having this kind of character going into it. Uh, as it stands right now, this is his first time using Rashid ever in the league. Is that a fact? Is it actually? Oh. I'll double check that later. But uh, John Takuchi says he hasn't been using Rashid for a while now, and he's feeling a bit nervous about it. But he uh, he's telling everyone at home, please take a good look at my Rashid. Please observe that I still got it. Don't think I lost it for a second. And that's pretty powerful. Having a side character, quote unquote, uh, as Rashid. <laughs> it's kind of wild to think about going down on the quote unquote tier list, you know, to to just pick a character that you maybe just enjoy a lot more, you're more interested in. But it is smart of him to go back to a character that's going to be better in this matchup. Like, if you see Sim on the screen, screen, like, why would you want to pick Cody's situation? Might as well pick a character that's going to do a lot better like Rashid. Uh, and it looks like, yeah, he has only been using Cody for Street Fighter League to totality. And I wonder if that's the case on, you know, on the CFN, if he's even went back to Rashid for it. I'm sure maybe he's dabbled in it, but like how much has he done that homework? On the other hand, Sako has been playing a lot of the Manat, right? He's been putting in a lot of work with this character, been doing a lot of duty with this character, still aggressive with it. So it's not gonna be easy, despite the fact that Rashid can steamroll Manat if he gets in. It's gonna be uh, Sako willing to slug it out, use that bar to get the EX and the damage on the deck. Maybe not always going for CA situations, which is perfectly fine. He's got the, the V meter to back himself up for uh, comeback situations off V trigger. Uh, but I am curious to see uh, you know, how John T deals with this. Like, you know, if you haven't played a character in a long time, if it's been a while, even someone as technical as John T uh, with his Rashid play, can you pull that out when it's a first of two situation when you need these points? Yeah, I think it's absolutely important to really observe that kind of fact that John Takauchi not using Rashid as often in this in the league actually could it might be a detriment. Like sure you might be picking the character as a tool to counter pick somebody and gain the advantage, but it goes out the window when it comes to the player to player matchup. Not just like, you know, character to character matchup, how that works out, but of course, mm -hmm. player to player is is the important thing. Sakunoko being well versed in Minot and been and, and utilizing this character throughout the entirety of the league is a whole different story, a whole different light in comparison to John Takauchi just pulling out the Rashid in the moments that he needs to for the counter pick. I think there's a lot more substance in picking Cody, but we'll see how it happens. Right in a two out of three scenario, mm -hmm. he does have a chance to switch out, so we'll see how it plays out as we get started for as we get ready for this upcoming match, the away trivia. Sako Noko saying that he tends to exaggerate things uh, a bit, uh, and that's one of his one of his flaws. Bon Chan says Tokido always likes to start, always likes to start the day saying he's fully ready, but that always doesn't end well, end up well. Uh, and then Tokido, when he feels less confident, he gets better results. How is that? How is that? Wait, <laughs> what do you mean? What? <laughs> what? How? How does that work? Tokido says he feels all right today. Oh, that's not a good sign. <laughs> Man says he feels good today. He feels all right. Now nah, you want to feel less confident to stay uh, to stay in the fight. But I, that's such a weird thing to feel less confident and do better. Maybe you're just like, you're hyping yourself up more like, okay, I got to really focus and, and stay situated. Be better focus in the anchor match to pull his weight just in case Sakunoko falls. But we'll see. John T coming through with that lemon lime. Uh, Rashid, that is such a weird color. I ain't seen that color in a bit. And also, we ain't seen the Rashid pick from John T. Again, he got to shake off the rust real quick with it. He only has a first or two to get the job done. But the good news is there's a many ways against the board play that she wants to send out. You got the B skill on the deck. You can really apply that pressure, and it's harder for her to escape. That B skill, or V reversal, I should say, to get outside the corner can be easily chased down. Is there some sort of, like holiday observed today because i feel like both or all four players thus far have picked very similar shades of green and uh You're i don't right. know if they coordinated that or not but that's really it's it's really uh on my mind right now anyways what should be on my mind is the sun racking up the drill kick just within range sakunoko has gonna have more than enough resources doesn't need to use any oh. of it just with the orb thrown out a full on combo coming in from sakunoko 
man, this is the oh. too good. Walks up, deletes the overhead, says, I ain't, I don't need a Chris in my cranium, dog. We staying solid out here. No hard heads necessary. Medium punch, just checking away. And Sako, again, one of the slugger styles in terms of Monot plays. I feel like he's willing to fight you out with the butts with this character. Even with the uh, hurt boxes being extended on this character and the medium punches, he's willing to sling these buttons out. And we haven't seen a whip punch. We have seen a big jump in from John T and a side switch. This is where you shine. Get into him. Oh, what a jump back jab to dissuade the, or dissipate the threat of the jump eagle spike. EX air eagle spike, I should say. And it's a whole different story, no man. Sakonoko dashing up two times over, getting the counter hit low yeah, medium no kick way. into the conversion, even though it was a subtle one, the crouching jab afterwards. Sakonoko is, is a totally different monster when it comes to him playing offensively and playing aggressively. He'll only play that mm -hmm. way if he knows that the other person is not ready for it. And it seems right. clearly that John Takauchi is not ready for the offensive capabilities that Sakonoko has. It's just one of those things like Sakonoko, we've seen him kind of timid or at least play to the beat of the other player a good amount of times. So he'll play the counter poke game. He'll throw out the orb a little bit more um, to see what the capabilities are. But it's been all aggressive from Sako right out the gate from both rounds. And I think that's like, like a telling sign, like I'm not really about the zoning, things like that. So if you're able to kind of slug this out with the normals and feel comfortable, you're really, uh, you're really dominating right here. We saw a very dominating round, even though he was put in the corner, able to escape, feeling like he's free. I see the smile on his face. I see a grimace because Zako is being an absolute menace. Moke sticking, I'm sorry, not Moke, John T sticking with the Rashid pick. I'm so not used to him playing Rashid. And I don't think he's I used agree. to his hands being warmed up with the character. We we'll see it right here. I mean, we'll see. We'll see how it plays out, right? He still has a couple more rounds to play, and hopefully, he can make something of it. Because as it stands right now, Sakunoko is just running him, running him down. And again, being the aggressor, if needed. Sakonoko is just doing, making all the right calls against John Takauchi. There's just something about John right now that hasn't really clicked for his Rashid yet. Despite now being the aggressor, I think Sakonoko just has him read so much right now. Easy, comfortable, V shift, finds the side punish, staying solid. Here's the activation. It's where the damage really comes from this character. You couple that with the corner push, the corner play, you could survive for another day. I'm seeing John T get into him with the throw. Here we go. Jati waking up. The eyes are open. This has to solidify. He's got a lot of bar to use. Immediate jump out though. Sako seeing the flash. He's out of there. Now he's going back to that patient play. The anti-air grab. They're coming in from Sakonoko, still in full control. And now commanding that pace. We talked about that style he likes to play. What a whiff punish there from John Takauchi using EX Eagle Spike as an option. But no, a little bit overzealous on the dash up the check with a thousand cuts afterwards from Sakonoko from the activation into the trigger. That's going to be enough to put him at match point with a good amount of bar down below. Now he's playing it back a little bit. John Takauchi, the one swinging initially at the start of this round. The jump in is successful. Full conversion into Eagle Spike. Now he's got Sakunoko into the corner. What is going to happen? What can Sakunoko do? Instead, he finds a way to jump hmm. out already past the whirlwind shot. And now we're seeing Sako get aggressive with it. But ever so often going back to the defense, we've seen the defense, we've seen the uh, the DPs, I should say, and the antis on the deck. But now he's going back to this aggressive style. He's challenging John T to not get put back in that corner position. There's a lot of bar to cook with. John T trying to put him in the corner, run the mix game, not stay lame, but the challenge. Oh, the crush! Fall for the fierce, puts the eagle spike into him. Heavy kick activation, of course. Just a nice little minute walk up throw. No die kick, like no! And this is, yeah, you're definitely dead. Sako gonna take it and say, you should have brought the mayoral dude. He's coming through, dog. Next time, let me see the Cody. Don't you know that Japan is not letting any foreigners in, even if you're political? You know, Cody was not gonna have access to Japan, <laughs> no matter how much we wanted him to play. Rashid, a whole different story. He might have snuck in. He used the whirlwind shot to get himself across the border, past immigration. And of course, brought his vaccination card with him just in case he was asked for it. That's going to be a 2-0 sweep from Sakonoko against John Takauchi, which is ever so important, right? John Takauchi again falling just a little bit short, but here's where it gets kind of interesting. Uh, 
Although it's one apiece, I think as it stands right now, both teams can acquire themselves three points. Production telling my ear, telling me in my ear, Cody has a whirlwind shot too. That is correct, but his only goes from uh, left to right, whereas Rashid goes from the bottom to the top, right? He actually gets some leverage and has a way to kind of like travel on it. You know what I'm saying? Like he gets he gets a little bit of takeoff, mm -hmm. but that's just me being specific. Either way, you're absolutely right. <laughs> Cody does have a whirlwind shot too. <laughs> <laughs> we can see the stats right, right here down Sako. below. Yeah, John Takauchi yeah, is pretty Sako. much a bunch of donuts on the board too. I'm just, I'm so flabbergasted at how strong Sako was in that match. He didn't even let anything come from me. It's not like John T was playing horribly. It was that Sako was at maximum output. And that's the thing. If you're going to bring a Rashi pick or a previous character, as you see right here, you're a little bit hurt. Uh, you got to have the rust off. You got to dust off the rust. You got to be ready, prepared. We saw it with Otani, right? He had been practicing with his Akuma. Uh, he had been getting that prepared and ready to go. And it worked out bringing out the Rashid pick, I'm not sure how much we saw from John T in terms of like that practice situation previously, but you know, maybe not the same kind of work ethic or not enough to take Sako down. So, it's going to be Itabashi Zangief going up against his favorite character, thankfully not his favorite person on the other end, but his favorite character to fight and you can see right here, not too good in terms of win stats or um, the amount of points that he has gained, only two on the side of the 10 times that he has played. Um, he has gotten, you know, 31, uh, 31 uh, matches played or, out of the rounds, or 80 rounds right there. Tokido, however, in the first place spot, looking fine. Crown this man, he a king. 12 points, seven out of 10. Itazan though says he will enjoy this best of three situation, uh, best of five situation, first three situation against Tokido. I'm sure if you're a grappler player, you want a longer set. Even if your character's at a deficiency, slight or or vi like variable, you want to be able to have more time to read and uh, understand and study that opponent, right? To put the grip on. It's so funny that the characters picked when it comes to that statistic. Tokido has 24 and 7. My man is open all day to take your points. No matter what character he uses, whether it's Yurian, whether it's Boxer, uh, either way, it's going to be something to look at. It's going to be a spectacle nonetheless. Being the king of points right now, even being the winner from the preseason tournament, this man Tokido has been doing nothing but crushing dreams. And you would think to yourself, with those kind of statistics and this kind of team, they should be in first place, right? Mm hmm. Fact of the matter is, they're not. Well, <laughs> well that just shows you again the strength of the player base out here at Street Fighter League Japan. Everyone, besides Good Aid Squad, of course, at the top, is gunning for them top eight spots. We've seen a lot of shifts, especially between the two and fifth. We might see some more shifts today here, too. Dead Nation trying to get as many points to solidify their spot for qualification. And Itazan going in with the command grab, caught a limb, trying to walk him down. Careful now. That flex will come through and catch any of those limbs. We've seen that before. That's a detriment of this match. But you have to kind of gauge your pokes very well if you're Yurian. Uh, it seems Tokido didn't get the memo. He opted not to go for any sort of green suit. That's this man not playing again. He, he must not like Christmas. He's one of those people. He's a Grinch. He's one of those. He's one of those people. <laughs> oh, we got ourselves one of those. Holiday haters. I know. That's exactly the, the double H's, man. I hate those guys. But either way, mm -hmm. so Tokido already off to a pretty solid start, at least uh, in terms of regaining the momentum off of those two command grabs that Itazan put the hurt on him with. But they're yeah, still opting to go for the fireball game just about mid-range and looking for some of these almost to connect. He's playing it pretty patient against Itazan. Had to find a whip punish on that Pierce, but will find a conversion right there with the Ink's Fireball. V skill two flavored. Such a strong tool in this matchup, in many matchups too, especially because you have a full screen that you could go, stock up with the V skill, and then go in. Not much, you know, Geek can do. Dash ain't too fast. And he doesn't have long range of moves unless he's in that distance. But right around this range is like a nice good heavy kick if you try to go for it. Now finds the activation, immediate view reversal. Cough in the corner. Careful, Tokido. Oh, careful, he is on. Oh, this is so dangerous. And he knows, yeah. I mean, Tokido obviously flexing the brain on that one. Uh, and we talk about Yurian players being Ungabunga. That was the most sophisticated Yurian play I've seen. Using the mirror as a punish against the Fierce. 
and then running away with it afterwards with the medium kicks being active on defense. This guy has got the most wrinkled brain I've seen as a union player. Unironed shirt that. I love the fact that he is not overextending too much. That medium kick coming through the clutch. And now the dash up throw after he solidified the template. But here we go. One SPD. Dash into him. The chase down, the flip-off situation, but again, the punish situation into the super. It won't kill, but it will put him in prime to take it. One touch. All he needs is one good button to do it. And these pokes have come hot and heavy. One touch away. Actually, make that maybe like a touch and a half. A medium kick, I don't know if will mm. kill from here, but with the gray life, possibly. Looking for the counter poke. You can see mm. Fukito deliberating on this movement. Yeah, it had to be a touch and a half. Okay. Wanted to make sure. Yeah, yeah, big boy help. He's a grown oh boy. Oh boy. This is tough. Another one? If oh he gets no. a third one, he might he might get the third one. <gasps> oh, oh my god. Wait, the what? Tears. What? You're I, you know what? what? That that's slow, but I I see what you crouch fierce in the EX or crouch fierce in the activation. Maybe you didn't expect the dash in the situation, but the trade's still in favor of Urian having that help. We talk, maybe we don't talk enough about it, but health, having a health buff throughout these seasons that Urian has had is such a benefit. You get to survive these situations, these minute, tiny oh, situations right here, able to stay solid, take that win. That's crazy though. Even when you make a decision where you trade with the other person that may not be the best, you get to walk away the victory. It's so interesting though. Wouldn't Inazan have won if he gone for the BD SPD? You might be right. Is he would have caught the crouch fears instead of going for the headbutt. What a bet. Yeah, that's kind of tough to call. I felt like that was something Itazan, that, that's like a Itazan calling card right there is to gamble it all on the SPD. That would have been like on brand, right? Mm. Changing himself up, new me, new you. Oh, crush. What's it on with the fears? Double elbows. Ash, Oliveira. Walk up back, though I like that. We get as much damage as possible. Man, nice and easy. You see how he controls the neutral with a medium kick? This guy. With a lot more than that, too. He switches it up between fireballs, the medium, the, the uh, normals, excuse me. And then dashing up to throw. He jumbled up my brain as he started the round off with dash up throw against Inazan. I mean, we, what Urian players you see play as, I, I would say, deliberately, you know? Uh, I mean, obviously the ones in Street Fighter League Japan, but out here you wouldn't expect to see someone so deliberate with their button presses. And playing almost a lame style. You know, maybe it's not, people are like, well, there's where's the sauce with Tokido's Yurian, but I like the way that he's playing. Risk averse, preventative health. Why get why get health insurance if you uh, stop yourself from being sick the whole time? But I feel like Tokido is one of the sickest to ever do it, so it's kind of tough to say that. And I'm telling you right there, oh. one of the sickest to do it right there. I'm telling you, Tokido is a bad man. Once he transitioned into this character, it's been one of the biggest heel turns. Of course, he's as nice as ever, but seeing him play oh, yeah. this character, I feel like is the baddest thing on the planet. He's got so much success with this character. It's absolutely ridiculous. Two nil against my man Inazan, Inabashi Zangief. It's in his namesake. He hasn't caught the W at all just yet because of how great Tokido has been playing the matchup. It is something that is also ridiculous because, you know, Tokido has had less time with the Yuria pick, right? I mean, he's got a full year and maybe some change with that too. But Itazan has been playing this matchup for, for damn near ever. Always prepare for it when he fights Nemo. But this is a different beast. This is Tokido. He's different. You know, he built different out here. He came from the Sasuke no Hado, threw that away for the Illuminati play. He said, I'm trying to get some cash. And the way that he plays this matchup is different than where I feel like Nemo might play a lot more aggressive, a lot more, uh, you know, take a lot more risks and things like that. So Kills want to go for these pokes, stay lame, back up with the B skill. It's so hard to read his rhythm, and you don't expect him to to play. You, you expect him to just kind of go in and get that win. You know, put the aggression on him. Maybe stay mid range. Maybe find these openings, but they're not happening. No crush counts on the B skills. You know, no activation points at all. We've seen a few SPD come, uh, SPDs come through, uh, but not enough in terms of aggression. And now Tokido on game point, already dash in back though, though. Oh, we getting wild out here, no mild. We're kind of curious to see uh, what Inazan has in store for the amount of counter poking Tokido has done. And the one time he actually got aggressive with that stand medium punch, Inazan was ready for it with the V-Skill flex. 
into SPD. This is going to be pretty good, right? With the amount of games that Inazan has lost, it's only made him stronger in terms of adaptation. He is a read monster. My man also has a big brain. He practices his vocabulary in terms of Street Fighter play since the get-go, right? His SPDs are the only, actually, SPDs are the only letters he knows in the English alphabet. <laughs> He has to go to front of the class, all he knows is his both letters. But SPD. here he goes, getting handsy Tokido with the throw. <laughs> Tokido doing real good. Again, challenging with the anti air right there. That medium kick making him jump. He made him feel a little froggy. He needs to go for that jump in too easy with it. No grip punch on the fierce. But Tokido fine with it. Activation, don't reach. Too far out in the distance. You see how meticulous Takedo is in playing that mid-range game. And just like that, yeah, in a negative situation after that trigger, Takedo firing away with a crouching light, not letting Inazan get a chance. There's not a lot of people that can test the V trigger the way that Takedo has been doing today. Mm, that's true. And he knows where to stand and how to deal with it too, which is such a good turning point for this character, right? You talk about comeback that is and stuff like that. It's so important for you know, geek to get going in the neutral with that B trigger. That's like a big turning point against, uh, you know, any fire characters with fireballs, lease it off the table. But Tokido's been su doing such a good job of laming out Ida's on stay outside the distance. Here we go, checks a dash. Gets puts a headbutt on him. Batista bomb throw. Oh no, you might be learning the, the letter E soon. Because these hands looking rated E for everybody from Tokido's side. Skilltu now charged up as well. Critical art on deck. He only needs just a couple of hits or maybe a solid combo to get Inazan into that danger zone. But speaking of danger zone, Inazan is also fully loaded on resources. He just needs a singular hit or maybe an SPD to get started. Who knows? Who knows how he'll find his way into the uh, the Russian roulette. Nice and easy. He's not diverting from his gameplay. I like this. You don't have to. There's nothing that has been presented to you from Itazan that makes you have to switch up your game plan. No need to go for the EX tackle, maybe like a whip punch or whatever against a heavy kick. He's just staying nice and easy, nice and solid with it. Just a few buttons here and there, a dash in, sprinkled in. The dash will do you. Tokido letting that time wind down. 15 yeah. seconds on the clock and he is feeling fine. Be reversal, get off me. Eight seconds left to go. Takedo is in full swing right now. Speaking of swing, and yeah, Veer Versal's out. Three seconds left on the clock, letting the timer scab run. <laughs> and that's what happens, man. You give this man your credit card one time, and he'll commit fraud looking clean in that suit. How do you think he got that suit in the first place? Takedo taking it clean. Mm. Three to zero against Inazan. Enough said for V6 plus FAV Go to Z making their stamp against the team. Three points to one. Wow, that was impressive. But you see Ida's on scratch and like, dog, how was there a Yuri in play if that's not just getting aggressive with it? But that is how Tokido solidified his win. Uh, easy 3-0 in a 3-1 victory for FAV Roto Z. Absolutely fantastic play from Tokido. I, I know people are like, bro, why did he get aggressive with the That wasn't exciting. But the way that he broke down Itazan, leaked the options off the table, made it seem like there wasn't much Geef could do. And really, it didn't look like it, right? The flex was off the deck. You didn't get a lot of SPDs going. A lot of the button presses were perfectly, the economy was perfectly spent on the button press of the template. Didn't need to be changed. We saw Itazan even going for a jump in, and that get denied. Feeling, making it feel froggy, making them switch up their game plan and making them falter is is what when you know that you, you're in their head. Quite possibly, yeah. I think, you know, the stats says it all. Uh, looking like an honor student, just acing his tests all the way through, passing all three exams with a rate of 100%. You can see two out of two when it comes to anti-air and then one for one with the invincible reversals. On the other hand, Mm. Inabashi has not been hitting the books. A bunch of donuts instead. He's been hitting up the donut shot. He's getting the, the yum yum donut special. Uh, zero for one in anti air, zero for zero in terms of invincible reversals. Does not have it other than critical art, really. So that's kind of tough to say. It's kind of the, the results were skewed against him, if you ask me, because of the fact that he plays Zangief. But other than that, mm -hmm. we are getting ourselves ready for the away team interview. And these guys are absolutely ecstatic. Sweet Jesus, what is going on? <laughs> Except for maybe just, you know. <laughs> yeah, after that, maybe he wasn't feeling so good, you know, going to the match. Remember, when he's not feeling good is when he starts to shine. And we saw a 3-0. He must have not been feeling all right. He lied. He said he's feeling all right. He's below that. But 
Stay inside. We're going to get, uh, you know, his words real soon here. Absolutely fantastic play again from Tokido. I feel like the Switch, I mean, people have been upset from the Switch uh, from Akuma. And, you know, me as well, because I love watching Akuma. But we see him work with this character and do something different with Yuri. And we see his play just diversify drastically. It may not be as uh, fantastically ridiculous with the Age of Setups and stuff like that, but his neutral play is fantastic. And also fantastic is Tokido saying that Itazan was his teammate in the last Street Fighter League. And Itazan has taught him how to practice a lot. And he's practiced a lot for the matchup today he was practiced for this how are you gonna train somebody and then the next time you're gonna leave you have to face off at his enemies and that was your downfall because you trained him for the match that's wild vicious that's the kobe bryant mentality right instead of taking the alan iverson approach where he talks about practice and not giving his all into practice my man is quite the opposite he's first in the gym and the last one out making sure he hits all of his free throws you know, Tokido saying something like that is, is not something out of the ordinary. It's not something new, but I will say it's still ever so impressive that he's picked up a character in such a quick amount of time and has taken down some of the biggest character specialists in the league with said character and also having the most amount of points thus far with two new characters that he's picked up within a season and a half, St. Cola, both Balrog and Murian carrying him and his team to victory consistently week after week. It's actually quite impressive. It just shows you how strong the, comp the competition is, how strong the competitors are when they really put their mind to it to adjust. I know a lot of people maybe say, well, why would I pick up a different character this season? It won't be enough time. But you see Tokido is a clear example of someone who has picked up a character, found victory. We saw the Intel World Open, found the victory there. He gets a matchup that wasn't so solid and now finding a victory for his team at the end. And as they get more and more points, it just shows you how strong he is, how strong his whole team is. It also shows you uh, that maybe he can pick up Luke real soon here and make the magic happen with that character. I love to see him put his hands on this character too. Uh, but again, Luke will be able to use later on in the league and we'll be having more action vicious coming up real soon. Dog, what can you expect from this last match coming up before we get the wrap up? Well, we're gonna get the run back between Nagoya Oja Body Star versus Shinobiism Gaming. Nagoya has been teetering between fifth place uh, and nearly falling below the red line that we've talked about. Shinobiism Gaming actually has touched the second place spot a couple times over. In fact, I think they might be there right now. So it's just a matter of who is gonna get more points as it stands. Shinobiism Gaming in a somewhat comfortable spot. Nagoya Oja Body Star on the chopping block. We're gonna see how it all gets down in just a couple more minutes. Again, you guys have been tuning into the English broadcast of Street Fighter League Pro JP. If you guys enjoy what you're seeing, be sure to let us know on all social media platforms. We do appreciate you guys, but when we come back, we'll have more action here at Street Fighter League Pro JP.
て一丁やってやりますかねえ見たか常に臨戦態勢さ Going back into the next matchup, as it stands, it's going to be Nagoya Ojo Party Stars versus Shinobiism Gaming, starting with the away team, which is led by Momochi. Of course, he's the head of the Shinobiism gang, followed by Fujimura, the man with one of the higher win records throughout the league, who's been the master of Lethal through and throughout. Higuchi following suit with the experienced youth on his side, playing that guy all out to the T. At a master's level, and of course, Toyama's talent, Otani, finding a couple of W's on the board slowly but surely where it counts. And we've seen Shinobiism Gaming still hover between second and fifth as it stands, being one of the more solid teams getting closer and closer to their playoff spot. Another team that's going to be doing the same thing is Nagoya OG Alja Body Star. Listen, I'm super excited. I can't even keep my words right because we got the lightning fast Akira on the deck. Bootleg Shao Hai no longer. This dude is his own brand. Right behind is the youngness explosion himself, Oniki, with that beautiful bison play. Right behind is going to be MOV, the maestro moving himself, finding a W finally, saying, I ain't free. Last but not least is going to be Dogura, the devil of victory himself. I love watching his bison play, overcoming bad matchups, saying what's on paper don't always happen in the match, but they need to keep up in terms of point situation. This is critical for both sides. If you should be some gaming, obviously you want as much many points to the board to go further. And you want to stay solid against MOV, who was getting real too close to the camera, looking like me, early season CPT. The Zoom. So the last time we've seen these two teams play, we see what happened prior. Three to one in favor of Nagoya Oja Body Star. Dogura taking it down with the anchor position. Akira following to that matchup prior uh, against Gucci and MOV not getting his W against Momochi. I kind of did that in the reverse order, but just to let you guys know, uh, Momochi has been rocking Akira pretty much majority of the tournament. But now that Shinobiism Gaming is in the away position, they're going to be putting up their list first. We're going to see how Nagoya Ojo Body Star is going to put their counterplay into effect. Now that we've seen mm -hmm. how it's going to play out, you know, I'm curious to see whether or not... Um, 
Simple. I'm kind of curious to see whether or not Oriki is going to be playing a part in this particular matchup. As it stands right now, Momochi going up first. I like that. Otani afterwards and Higuchi as the anchor. Fujimura not being put up on the plate for a very certain reason. I'm curious about that. And it seems like Nagoya Oja Body Stars is all smiles after finding out what the team order is. How interesting. What is going on? I would be super sexed and I have to fight Fujimura after the work that he's been putting in with the buffer situations. How ridiculous we saw that during the Bon Chai match and even beyond that, I would be super static too. But Akira is surprised with also with Fujimura being on the bench. So just like us, he's a little shocked with Fujimura on the bench. But that means maybe Hotani's doing something different. Maybe that Ryu play that he had before that wasn't solidified has now found a seat and maybe he's like, Solidified with his Ryu and a cool play and can switch back and forth if need be. Uh, the team is now trying to adjust their strategy right now on the fly because they were not expecting this. They were expecting the Fujimura. But I feel like on paper, at least, this is not too bad. You don't have to deal with the Kami picking. You got the Bison on the deck. You might be feeling a little bit okay in terms of matchup situation, but that does not take into account the personal situation, the player situation that could come up. Uh, Oja, uh, Oja Bodystar, I act like super call off guard by this. They were not prepared. And it is hard because we do see a lot of strategy come through with the teams. They didn't have different uh, formations for other people's formations and things like that. Different characters, different player picks and things like that. Different strategies. Right, right, but right. this time, this might be the first time that we've seen them be really confused. I think I think this is a blessing disguise. I think you have to look at the silver lining here. You're not gonna have to face off against one of the uh, top point earners in the league. I think this is great. Mm -hmm. like, I don't think the strategy should have shifted that far away because you're still gonna have to consider Momochi and Higuchi no matter what. I think Otani being in the mix might be a slight blessing. No disrespect to him, but as it stands statistically, yeah. Otani has not had the most success. So I'm not thinking to myself, as the Goya, oh man, like I don't have a strategy for this at all. Like I didn't see this coming. It's like, all right, well, this is one of the contingency plans. In case they were to put someone like Otani in, how big of a difference would it actually be for our team, right? That's what at least what I'm thinking. Um, as it stands right now uh, with Otani, in the four games that he's played as both uh, Ryu and Akuma, he hasn't found a single game with Ryu, but when he switched over to Akuma, he actually got a W in the anchor position when he faced off against Komofa Detonation's Tachikawa. It is the only time he's found success with a different character. So, with that in mind, I'd imagine you'd probably want to put MOV in that position, but as it stands right now, MOV is going to be the one taking up the mantle against Momochi to start things up first. Here's what I kind of... I mean, I can understand that because I don't like the Chun-Li matchup as uh, Akira, but okay. I would I would think to myself, you know, as MOV, I think going up against a character like Ryu wouldn't be too bad in terms of player-to-player -player basis as like Otani's Ryu, but I guess MOV being put up on the chopping block first, we'll see how it plays out. He hasn't had the strongest record thus far. He had like a handful of wins, or maybe like two at most, but I think it's a more of a personal issue, right? Um, MOV saying, although that they're a little panicked during the discussion time, he was actually ecstatic and looking forward the most to getting his revenge against Momochi. Oh, okay. He wants that revenge. So this is beyond matchups and things like that. My man said, I want revenge. Maybe feel a certain sort of way. Maybe feeling, you know, uh, you know. I, I've seen him practice quite a bit with the, with the Chun-Li. Obviously, having a win and going back down to a loss shows that he can at least do it, right? Shows that he can at least uh, you know, have the possibility of taking some of these hits out here in League Japan. Um, this is probably the first time that we in the league that we, the home discussion has had so much to discuss during the triv or during the discussion time. This is the first time where they really had to discuss what's going on. But it will be going up first. Um, the Chun Li pick. I'm not seeing too much of this matchup. How does this usually go? If you're a cure, what are you looking out for on the ground game? Like, what are you what are you looking for against Chun Li? There's a handful of there's a handful of things that Chun-Li can do to kind of prevent Akira from getting up close, right? You kind of treat it similarly to a Karen versus Chun-Li matchup where you're trying to outpace her with normals from further reaching normals. But if you happen to get caught whiffing said normals, uh, Akira has a definitely good time with punishing and closing the gap with medium elbow and getting herself some Oki after that. So it's just a matter of controlling the pace correctly with both your fireballs as well as your neutral game with heavier normals. Um, sure, Akira might 
have a slightly good time, very slightly good time against Fireballs with like the roundhouse DP. And I've seen Momochi go through those, mm -hmm. by the way. I know it's like, hey, Vicious, what are you talking about? That's a very risky thing to do. When it comes to Momochi, he has reacted to neutral fireballs more often than not with the roundhouse uppercut that Akira has. But other than that, I haven't seen, uh, you know, Akira have a very good time against fireballs in general. So very interesting to see what's going to happen with MOV. I just want to make sure that MOV doesn't, you know, fall into like a autopilot kind of scenario or autopilot kind of... Um, feeling in his in his mind where he just has to throw out some of these normals and and out poke Momochi because Momochi is definitely the cat to adjust on the fly and get his counter pokes ready. Going to the home trivia team right here, Dogra saying that Akira uh, saying Akira likes to move his shoulders whenever he's happy. This is of course in respect to their bad habits. Uh, it, it makes Dogra happy too when he moves his shoulders. Uh, Oniki saying Dogra tends to press the button a lot after ex knees hits i i feel that too you just like to you like drum drum it with him when he puts the kicks on him it's a bad habit from the arcade i feel like that's just like you kind of drum with even though it doesn't give extra damage it gives you like a gives you like a little bit of momentum in your head like oh yeah i'm doing it with him with the hits i feel that i feel you. i'm definitely Bro, doing a certain rhythm when i let critical arts rhythm like certain critical arts i'll have certain rhythms to it as i see the the normals fly and everything like especially with akira how he has like daigo coming in how she has daigo come in too i do like a certain rhythm mm -hmm. with the way that they they attack the opponent so i get you dogura going into the matchup right now mov versus momochi it's akira versus chun li they're both going for the green actually or kind of shades of green and maybe yellow but it's so interesting i don't know why but there has to be something going on with all these teams as to why they're picking this color yeah, I'd love to know. That'd be some great trivia to find out. Let's ask him later on. Let's see what happens here. Caught up in the corner, trying to find a way out. No crush kind of situation right there. Find the heavy kick. And as you were saying before, gotta be careful with the autopilot and the buttons. That light kick could come through. We see activation time. 2v1. Locking him down to get it done. But nothing in terms of mix situation. Dream will be, you'll take that. Yeah, this is exactly the kind of pace MLB wants to play at, right? We're seeing a lot of success coming in from the heavier normals, but Mo. Momochi always tries to find that way in a very unorthodox method. Yeah, after the forward throw, you are not allowed to press a button. You think you can, but no, the light elbow coming in hot. Full counter hit conversion from Momochi. I'm actually surprised he went for the critical art. I think he had more than enough bar to take it down. Hmm, just want to really get the job done. Could build back that, round, that bar back in round two or three to PvP, but I do feel like having a round start with bar is great, but this is just fine too. Big jump in that B skill, leaves him caught up real close. Makes him hold the throw. Good challenge though on the walk. Gets the EX legs. Okay situation right here. Trying to get the chase down. Staggers up the crouching mini kick. No opening though from Momochi. Man, as soon as I say that, the legs get blessed. One more towards stun is going to be instant air. No, it's an attempt to throw. The tech is there, but Shinobiism is going to be faltering in this round, I believe. So Momochi mm. showing that he also can bleed. MLB doing an excellent job in that second round. That was a, a an amazing round for MLB, actually. A lot of Oki, a lot of checking on the crouch arena kicks. You've got to be super careful. That's how she's been accessing her damage for many years upon years. And MOB is checking these walkbacks really carefully, too. Oh, try to find the anti-air. It's too far out, but still waking up with the pilots. MOB getting the Oki situation off the SBK. Does it again? He's in. Corner position has been real bad for Momochi. MOB's confirms have been pretty solid when it comes to the light conversions and catching the movement against Momochi. But Momochi, I like his movement also using like utilizing the walk speed that Akira has, hovering in and out of the heavier ranges and trying to find MOV committing to a heavier normal, hence why he goes to the skies at these times. But Mo uh, excuse me, MOV is caught on to this, but still manages to get thrown after that. The anti air is there, the uppercut forward throw now. We're gonna see a block string into Daigo. What's gonna be the side switch? No, the overhead instead. Is that stun? Yes, you go into a sequence. Oh my yes, God. Sir. And the raw done. critical art afterwards. <laughs> Deader than dead. Make past the life bar. Yeah, you have to. That was so smart from Momochi. I would think to myself, okay, well, he has to go for a combo that uh, has her land and float into critical art. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like, oh, I didn't, you know, I didn't realize the stun was adding up. That would be fine also. <laughs>
A-OK -okay out here with Mochi coming through with the B-Trigger. It's so dangerous, as, you know, at least from what I've seen with this character, in terms of B-Trigger activations, is in the corner, where you are forced to have to, you know, block your head, or well, you see situations like that where you get picked up instead. And again, the corner situation, real good, already off the records. Oh, here's the heavy kick, bro. I should say Tasha, sorry. Puts the shoes on him, stomp, legs too as well. Thighs, no fries. Yeah, you know, it was a very similar situation that we saw in that previous game where MOV actually just needed a clutch scenario or he needed to solidify that round by just staying solid. He did not have that clutch factor on him yet again. We're seeing remnants of MOV past before Christmas even gets here. No punish! Surprisingly, Ooh. on the EX Tatsu, all you gotta do is just duck the third hit and you are free to take down the damage. Oh my god. God, it's looking all Momochi right now. MOV is stuck in his head again immediately after that Daigo activation and the missed punish, a severely missed punish on the spin kicks against Akira. Gotta have those labbed out at the red. Gotta stay steady, and these corner positions have been perfect. Momochi just going for this corner carry. EX elbows, immediate tech though from MOV. But still, we've seen this before. Get the V-bar, get uh, Gage up. Get the uh, beach trigger going. Look at that damage flowing. Look at this, not pushing the issue, pressing the issue too much. Let some of these normals come through. Gray Life is adding up, crush. B bar build up. Getting closer and closer. That oh. situation we saw before. Pick up. Drop him down with the fireball. Oh no, we got a little bit more to go. EX fireball. The back and throw is gonna be more than enough. enough. Oh, it is. Oh. More than enough, yes sir. Yeah, there's that that back throw is kind of tricky too because it is a two-part damaging back throw. Um, but oh either way, Momochi with another solid victory against MOV. Unfortunately, two to zero. You hate to see it break down that way because MOV actually had it in the first game. He just let that corner positioning mm -hmm. slip ever so slightly and allowed Momochi to pretty much free reign on him. 2-0 to zero as Akira. We saw these strategies in place, and we saw what needed to be done, and we tried to kind of preface it with uh, how Chun-Li should be moving throughout the match in neutral. Uh, we saw those strategies in play from MOV, but MO from Momochi's side of things, he started to get the reads and the rhythm. We talked about uh, how MOV cannot afford to whiff some of these heavier normals because he will be susceptible. Momochi is definitely that kind of cat to whiff punish accordingly or get a solid jump in. And lo and behold, look at how many times he got jumped in on. One out of the five times MOV was able to answer, but the, the rest of the time he ate a ton of damage. A lot of tunnel vision. As you said before, as you prefaced quite well, the fact that if you're tunnel vision, you're not gonna be prepared for certain situations. He wasn't prepared to get the punish that could have let him out of the corner. He was so focused on the ground game. In some of these situations, so focused on the economy, the fears coming through. We saw Mochi get, get jump ins, walk ins, get the throw pressure going, back throw, and stuff the situations with the V trigger too as well. Uh, didn't seem like MLV was fully prepared for the V trigger uh, blocks and things like that. The mixed ups has had to hold it and now has to hold that L. The first win, the Shinobi is in gaming on the deck. MOV hurting right now, again with another L, but that's okay. I feel like the other team, uh, we're seeing Oja Body Star maybe saying something like, listen, dog, we, we'll, we'll pick it up. Don't worry about it. Everybody has bad days. We used to spend a lot of bad days, but you know we're going to pick it up because we are moving as a unit. This is going to be an interesting predicament. I think Otani is going to have to face off against Akira. It's going to be Ryu versus Kami or... What do you think, Saint? Actually, this is kind of tough. I think Dogura does have a slight upper hand against Haguchi, but I think, I, I honestly feel like Akira is not going to be the one in the anchor seat this time. I, I don't think so either. Even though I, I feel like Dogura should be fit. In my personal opinion, I think Dogura should fit against Haguchi. Uh, but Dogura is going up against Otani. Ah, man, it's, it's such a weird decision. Uh, but Dogura is empowered by the Lemon Scent. Remember, he's been sniffing that Lemon Scent incense quite a bit, so maybe he uh, has found some strategy. It is kind of weird to see Dogura go up against Otani. I feel like Akira could do just a fine job of frustrating Otani uh, with the Ryu pick. Uh, but Dogura is going to come up and leave the job to Akira to fight Haguchi. Later on in the anchor match right now, it's going to be Bison versus Ryu. And you see the points on both sides. Dogura in a big lead, big crown on him. 
Unfortunate for Otani, only got two points and one win for his team. There's 12 points on the side of Dogura, staying absolutely solid. You gotta give this dude a lot of credit for how he's been running through with the Bison pick and running through a lot of the players out here too. Uh, beating Colleen's, Geeves, bad matchups. And this matchup is very good for Bison. Like it's actually very well. You limit the fireball pressure, your normals are great. You have many ways to scout out a lot of what Ryu wants to do and bait out bad DPs and things like that and find full punishes. So. This is going to be a difficult job for Otani if he does go with the Ryu pick. I think the Akuma pick might be a little bit better, but if he's going with the Ryu first, maybe he has a strategy. And of course, you can see one of the top point earners. That's going to be changing up just a little bit, considering Tokido got his W earlier today, a pair of it, actually, mm -hmm. against Inazan in a 3-0. Um, two extra points over Dogura. Dogura should be in second place with 12 points. Uh, but as it stands right now, Dogura going back in with the Otani run back. If you guys recall from episode 5 back in October on the 26th, Dogra took down Otani in a very convincing man manner against his Ryu three games straight, right? I think um, this is the plan that they were going for. They wanted to see the full-on run back. It's looking exactly like how it played out from their last encounter, right? MOV had to play off against Momochi. Uh, Momochi ended up taking it 2-0. to zero. Again, hence why MOV wanted to go up first and get his run back. Akira has to face off against Higuchi again, but the last time they played out, Akira took it down 2 to one against Iguchi. So very, very interesting turn of events. I didn't get to highlight that earlier. Uh, a little little misstep here. But again, the Goya Ojo body star is going for the full on run back player to player. And as we get ready for that matchup between um, Dogura and Otani, we do have the away team trivia in terms of some of the bad habits their teammates have noticed about each other. Higuchi's saying he likes to sniff on the smell of books, especially new books. Hey, man, I I feel you. Like, I'm the same with, like, new sneakers, you know? I do the same with sneakers for sure. And I'm not going to lie, I do that with, like, uh, brand new games. Have you ever opened up, like, a physical copy yes. of a game? Like, after the wrapping, you open yes. it up, you take a whiff, it's like, ah, new game smell. It feels so good. It feels so good. Let me find out they sell that in a candle. If they don't, <laughs> you have to license that. <laughs> Let me get that God, in a candle. I could. <laughs> oh man, John T says. Uh, uh, John uh, actually said something about Fujimura. Uh, saying that Fujimura likes to begin his comment with "so desne," which means "so I see." So he always starts his comments with "so I see." Or something like that. So Fujimori, that's his bad habit. But again, there's nothing wrong with. I don't feel like these aren't that bad of habits. Like, what about? Oh man, like you know, I don't know something bad. Like you don't wash your hands before you come out of the bathroom. So like that's a really bad habit that you should take care of. This, these are not bad habits. These are like, like little tiny quirks. You know what I'm saying? These are absolutely okay. Let's see if you're okay in this match. Otani going up with the Ryu pick again. Does he have a strategy in the first two situations? Going to be a little bit more difficult. Uh, the Bison again, deleting that fireball game with the B-Scale, so you have to run those normals. We'll see how it plays out. Off to an aggressive start. Otani back-to-back -back jump so far, trying to close the gap against the Devil of Victory. Dogura usually likes to hang back a little bit. He's looking for the fireballs mostly and the ranges where he can throw out the Psycho Axe and get his chip damage started. But as it stands right now, Dogura actually hasn't been charging anything. There's the knee press that we're looking for. But still, he has been charging forward the whole time. Got the maybe Z. He's always been charging. Behind the button presses right here. Behind the hits, the normals and things like that. The down back every so often. You see that? That means that this man is charging. He is highlighting the C of the ABCs for sure. And not really committing to the down forward fierce. That is with punishable. At these ranges where we would love to get the Tatsu going, get some corner carry and some Oki. Dogra just refuses to allow that to happen. the slide mm, you know i don't know what that view reversal was about saint cola um off of the mm. slide i feel like you know uh there wasn't any threat of trigger up until that point so <laughs> uh, i don't know i'm a little confused on that one <laughs> sometimes you just get you confused and the advice of player confused they should be doing this and i just be oh, doing combos like sick. that that was actually oh, sick so he was ready for the, the trade combo time. Ready gets this feature. Fireball usage of Otan. Nice and easy with the neutral jump. Uh oh. Challenge on the dash. 
Ooh. Gets a counter situation, needing no vegan with it. Otani, even though caught off a little guard by that side, as everybody was, still stays solid enough to take the first win. Right, he's been a, pretty much the aggressor a majority of the time. He's not letting Dolgra get started with his spacing and letting him out footsie him, right? And the mid range is mid, further out from mid range to long range. Dolgra is going to have mm -hmm. the upper hand, I feel like. Yeah, being able to close out the gap with uh, scissor kick, being able to also have enough space to absorb a fireball if need be. Ugh, flip out. We'll Unfortunate. Bison just doesn't have the best time with flip out situations. The resets and things like that don't always favor him. I do like Otani using the fireballs close range too. I feel like that was one thing that he was lacking the last time that they played. He's going to slug those suckers out to make up for the deficit normals. In the beer versus are adding up in great life. He still is on a deficit. Here's the EX knockdown. Hard addition back. Dash finds a slight punish. Anti-air. Dogra with the slide. This time with on the deck. Let it rip off the target combo. Oh, you're definitely dead. No, never mind. Cycle Crusher. The cross up. EX DP called him leaving. Let me talk to you. I got one more thing to say to you. You know, black barbecues. Oh, you're trying to leave the barbecue? Is that what you're trying to say? Oh, no, not like this. Otani not having the exit strategy. Now he's stuck. He's the one serving up on the grill. He's got grilling duties, but we'll see who's going to get cooked up between these two. Now it's all tied up in the game. The first round, I should say, or the first game. Man, I'm getting jumbled up. Okay, so Dogra going in with the scissor kick multiple times. He's been charging up a good amount, but also masking it very well. Look at that, he's breaking it back and forth. What a whiff buddy from Otani. That was disgusting. Wow. I don't see many people dealing with the Fierce like that. Especially through Street Fighter League, like even the top players have not been dealing with the Fierce that's coming through. Now I guess the EX knees. Wake up, EX DP. Swing with violence. Air to air right there with the hell attack. You see, it was a little bit delayed to get the maximum amount to get that corner carry off the scissor kick. We're in it again, cut through neutral. Activation from Otani. Look by that pressure. He's down on a deficit, gotta make the comeback. Oh, that's so far away, too. That V-shift break is critical. But Dogura losing all that momentum. Otani now with all the fireballs in the world. Yes, sir. Chucking them like bad boys. He is just out, fresh out. You know, right when you're next in line, he's fresh out of fireballs for you. This is where Dogura gets to shine. Psycho Crusher coming in, but puts himself into the corner. How is Otani going to get the best of Dogura with the amount of bar he has left? He has to solve this issue. He's checking for the movement. Psycho Crusher cancel. Yeah, just trying to stay solid with it, trying to bait out something, anything from Otani. Like a reaction. We saw the XDP come through in the cross situation. The walk up throw, Otani. Get some of that bar. Clock is winding down. Double his fireball. No go. They don't juggle like that, my friend. And the raw slide for the win. Caught him. Slid in the DMs. Say, hey, what's up? Catfished him. He might have thought it Ooh. was Chun Li on the other line. It was actually all a scam. It was Shadowloo calling from the other end of that phone line on the other side of that Instagram profile. My man slid into the DM successfully and has infiltrated the base of Ryu. And I gotta say, man, Dogra might have lost that round had Otani not been a little bit overzealous with the EX, the second EX fireball. Mm-hmm. Having that resource is, would have been such a detriment. You apply the, the plus frames with the EX fireball situation so quick with it too. Interspersed with the normals would have found the finish. I do feel like that is kind of how Dogra's been playing in terms of getting got. He's been overzealous himself. You've seen the whip punches. Can Otani just solidify himself just a little bit more? Otani, now with the jump in, gets a throw, I should say. Back to neutral, back to mid screen with the fireballs. There we go. Punish. The reactions. That's what I was waiting for. I, I needed him to pretty much redeem himself after the missed punish off of the slide, but here comes Dogra. I was waiting for the activation. You know, we haven't seen Dogra do anything super fancy with the install, with not the install, excuse me, with the command grab from Bison. Mm. He just uses it as a way to enforce plus frames and close the gap. Yeah, I mean, it's not too bad to you know, deal with fireballs, but I do want to see a little bit more. That could solidify all that bar at the top. You could just get this round, get it down, but the walk back, fade away, crouch me to kick into EX fireball play. Perfect space for Botani. He might be finding himself with a game on the board. But the way it's starting, oh, you could see he's looking specifically for any forward movement, right? The Psycho Axe, uh, the Scissor Kick, 
That is a classic strategy using those neutral jumps, but of course, Dogoro well aware of it. Take a look at these knees as you come back down from that EX uppercut. The back dash away from the throw. Otani does activate for the trigger. Does get a big confirm, but no drops a combo afterwards. Ah, it's all in his big master plan to get the side switch off the reset. But now Dogura letting the cycle blast rip. Here comes the activation. Now we might see a cycle crusher coming in soon. And it stops out the fireball. Back to back. Is he going to go for it? Oh boy, the scissor kick now. Dogra playing oh, him shimmy. like a fiddle. I'm telling you, he's playing him like a fiddle, stuffing out the first fireball, getting the cross-up Psycho Crusher. This man is in full control. Controlling this pacing, he's on set point to do it. Just has to, just has to shake Otani a little bit, right? I feel like once this man is shook it, he can run random. So it's the fireball, close range, good reaction for Dogra. Even at that range, a little bit hard to deal with the threat of the EX Fireball or just mistiming, just eating some damage. Dogra ready and prepared. And he's going back to this back and forth, this offensive and defensive style. Nice and easy, nice and lame with the two. Didn't have to overextend too much. So Tiny with a little bit of damage, crushing me to kick in the Fireball. We're getting walked to the corner. Super Vice would love to have Ryu. Put him in the corner, run that pressure game. A hard knockdown. Cycle Accent coming now, applying plus frames. Getting himself some of that pressure. Very much so aware. Gets the tech throw against Otani. Otani was trying to sneak in there and get that back throw away to get himself started offensively. Big confirm there from Dogra. Still managing to get the Hell Inferno from that far. The Psycho Inferno reaches. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Got a little space on it. With a back dash. I say from the day one, no back throw situation. You definitely not want to be put in the corner as Bison. And he's got bar to work with. Try to put the side. Big jump. Otani stay away from that activation. He knows what's coming through. Counter situation. Here's the activation. B shifts away from danger. Don't want to get got up. Look at the dash up challenge on the slide. Otani. Can you see solid? Otani. He's actually going to take it down. I like that patience from the young man. And that's going to be super frustrating for Dogoro. You could visibly see he was shook just a little bit. That's the strategy he usually likes to implement against his opponent. He's the one that's usually playing lane, but Otani taking a page from Dogoro's playbook and making it his own, looking like uh, the Mud Dogs out here with Bobby Boucher. Sometimes he's aggressive, but sometimes he plays it smart. Mm. I like the fact that he is so hard to open up you don't see much of the bar being used you actually point out how we haven't seen too much of the v trigger i feel like otani is not allowing those situations to happen we saw the v shift away from the activation we've seen how he deals with the cycle crusher we've also seen him just stay away from the side too as well and the dash of situations too as well to just disrupt the rhythm of what door wants to do and that just allows the command grab to come through game to game we're gonna see Who's going to take it down? I feel like Otani, though, if he can stay at this rate, he can take it. But it's going to be difficult because Bison does have the tools Ooh. to get the damage going. We have Punish again, though, Otani. Man, he is side switching off the, all of these instances. That's a big Psycho Axe, excuse me, a big Shadow Axe confirmed from the target combo into the trigger now. This is, yeah, plus frames. He gets to dash up twice over. Otani still manages to get the side switch. V shifts out of the way just in case the cross up comes from the Psycho Crusher. Otani making all the right moves. I do like his usage of the V gauge too. That was so smart, making himself uh, non susceptible to the Psycho Wax. EX scissors from Dogra still walking him down. Oh man, the back dashes have been real good from Otani too. Just staying away from the slow situations, the long reach of Bison. Staying solid. And right in the super. That'll not seal it just yet. Caught the dash again. You may not pass. Blast Psycho Crusher. He bites game. He shifts away from danger. Gets Fireball to lock down the neutral plus frame. Trying to get the take throw too far off though. 10 seconds on the clock. Oh, These boy. rounds are going down to the wire vicious. Otani with a slight lead. What do you do here as Otani? Do you let the time run down again? Any sort of chip damage will do it. And it's the Psycho Axe. Or see, it's the Psycho Crusher. Oh. That was well played from from Dogura. I think that was exactly what he was looking for. I don't know what Otani could have really done to stop that chip damage from coming out. Maybe a V-Skill, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe go for a parry, but it would have been such a hard call. I mean, either or, you, you have to do something in that situation and, and call it out, because you're either die either way, the timeout or death. Since you, uh, death. So, either way, right. Dogura is on set point. 
I would love to see Otani do that, but the pressure might be getting to him a little bit. Can Dogger use this momentum and break down the beautiful defense that we've seen from Otani? I would have loved to see that parry come out and him getting the time over. That would have been so frustrating for Dogra. But either way, as it stands, yeah. Dogra now in the lead with that time over, looking at match point against the young man. Watani's well, been doing a great job, though, of kind of outpacing and outspacing Dogra a good amount of the times. So he's caught a lot of whiff punishes, and boom, big confirms. Ooh, a side switch into the forward throw now. Checking with the low forward, a slight delayed confirm off the low forward into the EX Fireball. I'm liking this decision-making from Otani. Shadow Axe into Tart, or excuse me, into the trigger. Ooh, uh, gets the low, uh. slow, hell attack. Yeah, saving that bar at the bottom, saving that V-Trigger for that right time. Trying to show Vicious something. Show us all something. Oh. V-Reversal immediately doesn't want to get ripped up. Crush Ooh, with the heavy kick, that'll be it! Ogura taking off the they headset with win. confidence. A little bit of frustration settling in from him, from his side. You can see he's, he's kind of shook. Even though he got the W, he's like, man, that was a frustrating match. That was actually mad close. I will say, Otani is slowly starting to put it together. That was a very impressive mm -hmm. feat against one of the veterans of the game. He got him pretty shook. And Otani is like, you know, I think I did all right, and I, I got to agree with him. I think, you know, with the demeanor that Otani had, he should be proud of his performance. That was very, very well done. There's just very few errors I saw um, out the gate. You can see a little bit of nerves set in, but after that, he was looking at, like a confident man. I do applaud his efforts overall against Dogra's Dictator. Yeah, I think uh, he leveled up drastically for the match. You could tell that he definitely leveled up drastically from the match that he had prior. A lot more decision making in terms of defense and a lot of great, I mean, at least had one anti on the deck and three out of four bust outs. Unfortunately, one of the bust outs, you know, led to a lot of damage. Dogra on the other side, no involved because Bison don't have those. Capcom, you know, I ain't gonna say it. But anyway, five out of 17, though, big amount of jump ins from the side of Otani. Amazing in terms of the jump in play because I feel like that is a lacking factor of Bison. Crouching Fierce, you have to be predictive with uh, for the anti airs. So it's good to kind of play against that in the nature. We saw a lot of jump backs come also from uh, Otani. Uh, Dogra's anti air average is actually uh, the same as his average. Uh, our average percentage is the same as his average of 29 percent uh so overall it's around that that same average the anti that makes sense to me you know bison being a character that you gotta be predictive when you anti situation with the crouch fears so it takes a little bit more uh work take the air to air and stuff like that but yeah so what happened was like he's pretty Dome much consistent pretty much consistent when it comes to anti-airs and getting the w's right one of the number one point earners for the team i think now he's just slightly below takito he has 13 points seeing as how that match only oh. uh got him one right because that was like the middle match it was not the anchor match but as it stands right now we're seeing a lot of consistency right that anti-air percentage being the same as his average 29 percent that is mm -hmm. a pretty solid number like 20 29 percent like maybe a little on the low side but with bison that speaks volumes you got to multiply that by three that's the three man rule right i feel like with the anti-air right? percentage you got to make sure uh, that you have to understand what character he's using uh for that statistic bison come on son like you got to give him a little bit more credit than that that is uh pretty mm -hmm. uh pretty ecstatic that is a uh, pretty impressive i should say Talk about impressive. Akira coming up. This Kami has been on everybody's mind. Something different. Akira saying it's very important. Two points for them to reach the playoffs. So he's got to work very hard for this set. He definitely has to work very hard because, again, it's, uh, it's oh, I'm sorry, Haguchi was seven points on his side of these game for his team. Five out of ten. That's a lot of wins. And it's put a lot of aggression in terms of this Gao pick. I feel like his rhythm with Gao is super hard to read. He's maybe not as technical as Daigo is, but he is so much about, I'm going to be able to walk forward. I'm really buttonsy. And let's see how it works out. This match is going to be really difficult for, I feel like for Akira, because he can't make mistakes, right? If you make mistakes, you will melt. So Haguchi will definitely capitalize and put the damage to the deck. On the other hand, though, Akira is hard to read, though. So I wonder how Haguchi is going to how to play this out. The last time they did play, though, uh, it was Akira's win. He did beat Haguchi, but that was a shorter situation. That was a first of two. 
That is correct. Yeah, in a full-on three out of five set, I feel like Higuchi might be the better man. Who knows? Either way, we see Akira already swinging for the fences, getting the throw bait against Ooh. Higuchi and the forward throw. Now it's going to be all meaty city. Meets it to the concession stand all the way in the, the Capcom ring. I'm telling you, man, Akira is one explosive cat. This guy is here to play. Look at the amount of damage Ooh. with 81 seconds left on the clock. No EX bar saved in that matchup. And the jumping medium punch so slick. Look at Akira go. This dude willing to jump in on a character that's built for anti-airs. That is ridiculous. That again shows you that he is uh, he's on a different sort of plane when it comes to this character. And putting on the aggression, knowing that if you get got up in the corner, you're probably this person can be hard for him to leave. The back medium punch, the constant pressure you can put him with the walk, strike throw pressure. And also, the fact that he's got no three frame means he's got to do things like this, like find an activation, go back to mid screen. Gucci with the baby boomer to lock down the neutral little bit. Like he stutter stepping those. Be reversal, we out of that. And the last hit to do it. Oh my God, not enough to kill though. Yeah, but there's do. still the ton of V-Trigger. Yeah, coming in from Akira. Yeah. This is so dangerous for Higuchi. And still throwing out the booms with confidence. Oh, ah, that's not what he wanted at all. A very significant error. But I still think Higuchi, no matter what the outcome was, I think the jump back jab would have clipped him. Yeah. So, okay. so round around right here. Akira with the buff from the Fierce, Spiral Arrow immediately, puts him in the corner, Gucci Newton challenge though, we talked about how aggressive he can be with his buttons, and how willing he is to slug it out as Guile, as a Guile player. And certain work out some of these instances, but Akira just, the range of the medium kick coming through for the activation, immediately spinning it, and he's going to be able to get some V-Bar back if need be, as his Browns go down. Oh my god, Cross the cross so that is are you critical me? That was actually disgusting. That was actually disgusting. I can't tell if that was an overlap of the uppercut or if that was intentional or not. And yeah. my god. Okay, so I really have to Talk understand to whether or not Akira meant to do a dive kick at the end or if he intentionally wanted that roundhouse to catch the Crouching Fierce against Guile. I am actually completely unsure whether or not that jump roundhouse at the end was intentional. That was actually insane. Mm. Akira having those sequences towards the end, I, I legit couldn't tell if those were intentional. I get it, he's a pro. Don't get me wrong, like, you know, there could be mm -hmm. intentional moments, but it just seemed a little too suspicious. Yeah, 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 like, a little, little, too, uh, little too perfect with it. But I do, you know, he, he definitely has some good moments in understanding how to do this matchup. We've seen him time and time again. You watch the CFNs or, you know, his stream and stuff like that. Even out here, Street Fighter League have some really great decision-making against entire situations, against multiple characters, not just Guile. So, uh, I don't want to give him flowers all the way, but I do want to give him the ability or I want to give him his flowers at least in terms of his ability to put on the aggression session. Look at how quickly he got into Higuchi once again. Look at these wins. He won, He's hungry for those points, dog. He ain't ate in a while. He's ready to eat. Ready to feast. Yeah, forget the forget the bouquet. Just give him a steak dinner. To be quite honest with you, Ooh. this man is. Oh yeah, I like that. I like that punish last second from Akira. Ortho now is going to be so What? What did Higuchi press? Yes. Critical art on deck. That's going to be more than enough. Two rounds straight. If this were anywhere outside the anchor match position, it would have been a clean cut decision. But as it stands right now, Akira is looking to 3 0 Higuchi. You can see Higuchi even putting his hand to the camera side. He's like, listen, listen, listen. It's not over yet. It's not over till it's over. I understand the mission. I understand the mission. <laughs> Hold on, y'all. Chill out for a second. I can hear a bald man. I can hear a bald man screaming from across the pond. Tell him to keep it down, or for, or, or else I'm gonna put it to him with this Kyle. Again, it's not over until it's over. Higuchi, looking like he's trying to stay in full control, stay composed. But man, Akira, it's so hard to contain the way he's been playing. He's been playing at a six, and Higuchi hasn't even started the corner. You got somewhere to be. This with the quickness, Akira getting into him, but catches the walk back just like that. We could be seeing a nice little return. I like how Gucci's trying to get the distance. Immediate flash kick. Boom, lockdown. Lucky boy to just solidify a little more of that neutral. Akira getting hit with these, some of these hits. And a little bit of the booms coming through, but Akira still has the lead. The feature off the table. Can't be whiffing no buttons. Can't be whiffing no booms at all. Oh, the hooligan roll! You saw it all. Akira on set point. The decision making that he does. With all the ear, the jump ins, the hooligans, the dive kicks have been absolute money. No funny. 
Akira is getting super lucky too with the placement of that hooligan. Higuchi actually ended up getting mm -hmm. side switched and got a Ford Fierce by accident. Akira, again, now looking at match point and has just been mauling Higuchi. Look at the confirms off the low forward and still on point. That would have been disgusting if he got the stun off of that. Look at the sharp dive kick as well. Higuchi had to make sure the stun went down. The anti-air is there. He's fighting for dear life out of the corner. The upside down kick still connects, but here comes that trigger. This is exactly where Akira wants Higuchi to be. The V-reversal now trapping Kami into the corner. The no. full conversion into the counter and Akira takes it three to zero. Full redemption for Nagoya Oja Body Stars. Absolute mauling from Akira. And this is why I say, if you think Kami's boring, if, you, if you're tired of watching that character, you definitely come through a Street Fighter League and catch some dude Ooh. like Akira coming through because he is so ridiculous with it. Expeditiously, he was on that Grizzly because that was a mauling. I, I, this dude is ridiculous. And that's a 3-1 win, same run back situation, even more dominant than we saw before in this run back. Oja body starts taking the victory. That was ridiculous. I, I can't even get over how well Akira played. I, I am I am like flabbergasted his decision making, his jump ins. And yeah, there were some mistakes that came from Higuchi's side. Obviously all the side switch kind of come into play and making some mistakes come from Higuchi. But it's just the fact that he was able to pick that up. And also you see right here, uh, two to two on terms of the entire situation, absolutely perfect when it came to the jump ins. On Higuchi's side, not so much. And those came to the detriment. We saw the hooligans, the dive kicks, the jump ins, damaging. Amazing play again from a yeah. That oh. We always like to look at the anti-air score. Seven out of 13, 53% from Higuchi. Not bad, but that is not enough when facing off against someone like Kami. There is a certain amount that you need to have in order to succeed against Kami, right? You're going to see that number go up and up. It's just a matter of how you're going to contest against it. One of the key factors is that dive kick. And even the hooligan technically counts. I will say Akira... You know, it's one of those things where you have to know how to play against Kami in Street Fighter V, but there's something about the way Akira navigates this character that makes it look like a different, com a completely different character overall. Like, he is he's an absolute speed demon. There has been no stopping him as soon as the count started. Literally, the first round ended with 81 seconds left on the clock. He spent everything as soon as he got it. This man got his paycheck, didn't save nada, he just went balling out of control, immediately went for the Rolls Royce and took it out for a test drive. Spin fast, live fast out here. Akira saying he is very, very happy, but he's actually got to go to work after this. So he has somewhere to be. Listen, I, I got to go to work. I got to clean this up nice and quick. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you, Akira. That is that, that kind of work ethic I respect, right? Immediately doing Street Fighter League and going to work. My man is exactly on the same timetable as me. I do appreciate that, Akira. And I will say, let me fix my face. Not the Rolls Royce, that's rolling in style. I will say he went straight for the Lamborghini. He was looking for top speed as soon as possible. My man, Akira, was also expecting a couple of things from his teammates, right? Although we got the W, he was expecting something else from the other side of the pond or other side of the team, right? He was expecting Momochi or Fujimura to play the anchor match, right? And so in that interview, he was quite surprised. He wasn't expecting to get the full-on run back against Higuchi. And he also pointed out there's two more matches left and that they have to do their best to make sure they stay within the second through fifth place threshold in order to reach the playoffs. But as it stands right now, man, these matches were absolutely ecstatic and unprecedented. I did not expect him to go this kind of way in terms of the runbacks in full force all the way through. Also, you did see, I got to give credit back to, you know, Shinobi's and Gaming. They try to swing back. They got close in a lot of situations. They just weren't able to clutch out many situations until the anchor match. And then Higuchi got ran over. We go back into the FAB Roto Z and Detonation getting a 3-1 uh, victory on the side of V6 plus FAB Roto Z. And then, of course, we saw Higuchi 
get absolutely demolished. And we're gonna see right here, good eight squad, MVP Roto Z, Ojo Body Star, Shinobi some gaming, and Gil Gun still in first to fifth. Milodon Beast, Soul, and Detonation still trying to claw their way up, but it's starting to get a little more space in between in between Gil Gun and Milodon Beast. There's one point in between, but that turns into two points, three points if you're lacking a slack game. Soul really far behind. Same with Detonation as they weren't able to get a victory. Ah, I think with the way it pans out, if Gyogun and Mildon Beast happen to score zero points in their next few games, they might be in danger. Sai Shunkan, Soul, Kumamoto might have an actual chance because they still have two more games to play as well, I think. I'll do the full-on breakdown mm. another time, but as it stands right now, it's mm -hmm. still kind of tough for those last couple of teams as we see them playing off again couple on detonation currently in last place facing off against gogan the ones that are on the chopping block in fifth place whereas v6 plus fav roto z will be facing off against the good eight squad ladies and gentlemen it has been an absolute onslaught for street fighter 5 action this week and guess what we still have plenty more to go it's going to be happening on thursday so you guys have to set your watches have to set your timers and your calendars to make sure you do not miss any of the action it's been an absolute pleasure saint give us a little bit of a summation or how you've been feeling about today's matchups they've been absolutely fantastic they've been absolutely furious and they show you the top shelf level of street fighter 5 right now so this is the perfect time to get in the game and if you have it check the vod's on all the applicable channels people it's been absolutely fantastic in commentating with all of y'all giving all this action shout out to all the players coming through and shout out to you at home and as always keep playing street fighter 5 see you on the streets peace